When I read the readings for today in preparation for the gift of presiding and preaching, I was struck by the Lord's words to Solomon in this first reading. Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Wow, that's astounding if you think about it. God is saying to Solomon in this dream, ask me anything and I will give it to you. The God of all generosity, the God of all abundance, the God who is Lord of everything is inviting his servant Solomon to ask. Those words struck me. I thought to myself, what if God were to appear to me in a dream and say that? What would I ask for? I wasn't quite sure. I'll come back to that a little bit later. But Solomon asked for wisdom. He asked to be able to have an understanding heart to judge the people for which he was king and to distinguish between right and wrong. If he had tried to do this on his own, he would be like our first parents, Adam and Eve, who wanted to, on their own power, distinguish right from wrong. The knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Solomon humbly invoked to share in the divine wisdom so that he could care for this people who had been entrusted to him, the king, so that he could know how to lead them. And God grants Solomon's request. The all good, most high, supremely good Lord pours out his goodness upon Solomon so that he can have that wisdom in guiding the people. God's goodness is evident throughout the readings today. His kingdom plan is evident. In the letter to the Romans chapter 8, one of my favorite passages as well with, with Scott, as he spoke about it earlier in the weekend, we hear this short excerpt. We know that all things work for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And we sometimes focus on the first part, that all things work for the good of those who love God, and that is true. But we have to remember the second part of that sentence, who are called according to his purpose. He's only going to give us what will be according to his purpose. He's going to, if we have hearts that truly desire him and his kingdom, sometimes he will give us things we don't want. Sometimes he will not give us what we want or give it to us at a later time. God has his own timing, his own plan. And having talked with a number of you informally this weekend, I know that you're wrestling with that, and we all wrestle with that. What is God's plan right now? What is he working out? What is he doing in my life? How is he revealing himself? And God is patient with us as we seek to continue to understand and to follow his will which requires a trust in his goodness, that he is good and that he wants our good and that he has made us for the good. Easier said than done, right? Sometimes difficult to trust in his goodness. And then in the gospel today, we have these beautiful parables. Actually, in these three weeks, in the 15th, 16th, and 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, We've been hearing parables, and today we hear the last of seven parables that Jesus shared with his disciples. The first, a couple weeks ago, we heard, and it's been repeated at different times in the readings, the seed and the sower. We also heard Jesus' parable of the weeds and the wheat. We heard last week the mustard seed and the yeast. Remember the small seed and the bit of yeast that makes the kingdom grow. And this week, we hear two parables at the beginning of the gospel, which are very close in meaning, the treasure in the field that is found, and the man, buys, the man sells all he has to buy that field where the treasure is, and the merchant seeking for and finding the precious pearl. And then finally, we hear the parable of the net with the good and the bad fish, the net that collects everything and then is sorted out 
just as at the judgment, the good will be sorted out from the evil. The net and the good fish is much like the weeds and the wheat. It harkens back to that parable. All of these parables are speaking about the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is the manifestation of God's goodness. The treasure in the field and the pearl of great price. It's interesting that they're very close, but they have some differences. In the first parable, the treasure in the field, the treasure stands for the abundance of gifts of God's kingdom. It's a treasure, the kingdom. The pearl stands for the beauty of the kingdom. It's worth searching for. In the first parable, the man stumbles upon the treasure in the field unexpectedly. In the second, the merchant seeking the pearl finds it as the result of a lengthy search. Pope St. Gregory the Great says this. Well, first, a little commentary from the Navarre Bible, and then what he said. Faith, vocation, true wisdom, desire for heaven are things which sometimes are discovered suddenly and unexpectedly, like the treasure in the field, or they are things that are sometimes discovered after much searching. However, the man's attitude is the same in both parables and is described in the same terms. He goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Detachment, generosity is indispensable for obtaining the treasure. Sisters and brothers, we are called to seek the kingdom of God. When we do that, as Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Everything else in our life, our financial needs, our family concerns, our work, our leisure, our play, our health, if we are seeking the kingdom of God, all will be well because we will be living in accord with God's purposes. And part of that seeking is asking and, not, and asking the Lord for a heart that asks for what he wants. So that brings us back to the first reading. That brings us back to Solomon's question or God's statement to Solomon, ask something of me and I will give it to you. I was thinking about this the other night and I did a little spiritual exercise. I closed my eyes. I allowed myself to take a deep breath and focus on the Lord and his presence. It was while we were in here and we were praising and worshiping God. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to ask of you? Lord, what do you want me to ask of you? And I just stayed there in silence and I tried to listen with my heart. And a couple things came in my mind and jostled around in my brain and consciousness. And then I knew what it was. The Lord said to me, ask to be able to forget yourself. Not in a self-deprecating way, but in a self-emptying. And so I asked him for that. I'm going to ask you right now, to do that same spiritual exercise. Close your eyes if you need to. Open your hands in front of you if it's helpful or whatever allows you to pray. Take a deep breath. You've heard many things this weekend. You've experienced encounters with other people that have been powerful. You've received Jesus in the Eucharist and in the Word. Say to the Lord in your heart right now, Lord, what do you want me to ask you? Don't worry if nothing comes. It may come later. Lord, what do you want me to ask you? Now take a moment, if you feel led, to ask him. Even if you're unsure and uncertain.
Father God, you who are the Father of lights, you who give good and perfect gifts to your children for your glory, you who through whose purpose we find our good, continue to allow us like Solomon and like your disciples and the prophets to ask of you what you truly want. Continue to place your desires upon our heart, your desire for our for hope and holiness. Lord, take us deeper underneath our own concerns and worries and anxieties and insecurities to what matters to your heart. Allow us to trust in your goodness, for you are all good, and you know and desire our good and the good of our families and the good of our culture and our nation and our world more than we could ever desire. Lord, we want to live in you and in your love. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. I believe that the Lord is going to continue to plant seeds in you. That as we pray today, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We participate in that kingdom. We reveal that kingdom until its fullness is revealed, until the pearl of great price is found in its fullness, until the treasure in the field is experienced in its richness, until we see the effect of the yeast and the mustard seed, the faith of the Lord. But the Lord is patient. He's giving us time because we need it to repent and to be open and to grow in conversion, and to pray for the conversion of our family and our friends and our enemies. And the Lord will fulfill his kingdom. May God bless you and give you his peace.